Alright, hey guys, today I am going to be doing a video response to Josh, also known as Games of War, who is a good friend of mine here on YouTube. He made a video about the most rare or valuable games in his entire video game collection, and I figured that uh, that would be a really fun video to do a response to, and I thought you guys would really enjoy seeing some of the more rare and valuable games in my collection. Now, sort of just a disclaimer for this video here, just like Josh said, this is not a video meant to brag to you guys to say, hey, look at what I have and what you don't have. It's just that we're collectors of video games, and, you know, we enjoy playing games, and we enjoy collecting. So, sort of, the rare games in our collection, we, you know, we really value, we really hold close to us, and we enjoy having them in our collection. And we know a lot of you, who are also collectors, like to see what other people have in their collection. So, that's the point of this video, just to share the love of, you know, collecting video games. It's not meant to say, hey, you know, I have Earthbound, and you know, it's, it's not like that at all. Also, when it comes to rare games today, when I buy my rare games, uh, I don't buy them anymore just because they're rare. Um, I buy them because, you know, I'm looking up games and I see a game that really interests me, and if it so happens to be rare and expensive, so be it. I will do my best to try and get that game for a good deal and add it to my collection. So, what do you say we get started here? I picked out a whole bunch of games from my entire collection, and at the end of this video, I am actually going to do... Um, sort of like a top 10 in a way of the rarest games overall in my collection. So I'm going to get started here with the biggest box of all just to sort of get it out of my way. And that is this here. This is Steel Battalion for the original Xbox. Now I'm not going to go and unbox this whole thing for you guys and uh, show you the controller. But for those of you that don't know, this is a very, very challenging and probably I would argue the most realistic mech combat game to ever grace video game consoles because it comes with and I'll probably do a video on this in the future before the new one comes out, but it comes with a, a gigantic joystick. Um, I'm talking the thing is like this big. Not even kidding. With foot pedals and everything, it's so big. Um, a complete copy of this goes for about $150 to $250, depending upon condition. But what makes mine even more rare is I have the first pressing or the first release of it, because the buttons on the controller are green instead of blue. So later releases had blue buttons, early releases had green. And what makes this so rare is, well, look at the size of it, first of all. It was expensive when it first came out. Most people were not going to buy a big game like this. So it's actually really pretty tough to find this. So. Okay, and next is Earthbound on the Super Nintendo. Now, Earthbound is not actually that rare. It's an uncommon game, but the demand for Earthbound is through the roof. And the value on this has gone up dramatically over the past year or two. When I bought my complete copy, I got it for $120. And that was a good deal. I was shopping around for quite some time to get it for that. And it came with the, the, uh, the strategy guide, the game, everything in good condition. A complete copy of this right now, like in the condition I have, you're talking at about $300 to $400. Just the cartridge itself is about at least $150. You can't get it cheaper. It's usually going for about $180. So the price on Earthbound has gone through the roof. It's a little ridiculous, if you ask me. Um, is it worth it? It's a really good game, but that's a lot of money for one game. Okay, Blackthorn for the 32X. Uh, I have a couple of pretty uncommon 32X games, but this would probably be my most valuable, the hard-to-find one. A complete copy of this will generally go for around $60 to $75, and this is available on other consoles, but the 32X port is one of the more hard-to-find games on the system. All right, now I do have a couple of reproductions or homebrew games for the Sega Genesis, and what makes these so hard to find is that well, for one, Super Fighter Team uh, released this. It was never localized here. I believe this was like a Korean RPG that was never localized. They uh, translated it and released it to the masses. And I think there's about 1,500 copies of this in existence. There's an alternate cover, cover to it. But Super Fighter Team, when they release these Genesis games, when they sell out, they generally may do one additional pressing of it, maybe two at the most. Uh, and then they don't make them anymore. So this actually, people ask insanely high prices for this on eBay, and it's becoming really hard to find. Also, Star Odyssey is another game that was released on the Mega Drive, and it was never translated, so they um, they translated it for America, and they released it, and I think they only made 600 of this, and it did sell out. They might do another pressing of it, but this is also another game that's now in high demand since it's no longer available. And I'm sure you're all aware of Pure Solar right now, but this is the first edition pressing of the game in the limited edition packaging, and... Fans are really after these. Uh, the prices for these on eBay are crazy. They're you know at least 250 plus, uh, sometimes 300 plus for this edition here. They did a re-release, but it was in a traditional clamshell, and it's not with all the extra goodies that are in here. But uh, this is extremely expensive and valuable, and I would argue pretty rare because in order to get this, you would have had to have pre-ordered this way ahead of time. I pre-ordered my copy about three years before this game came out. 
definitely the most rare and valuable game in my Sega Genesis collection is Musha. Now, it's not an extremely rare game, but the price and value for this, especially for a complete copy, has gone up tenfold. I can't believe... <laughs> I paid, I think, 110 or $112 for my complete copy. Complete copies now on eBay, and that was about, I don't know, you guys might remember better than me, maybe a year, year and a half ago. Um, but complete copies now on eBay are going for around 200 plus, sometimes upwards of $300 plus. Dollars. So Musha is a really good game. Is it worth that price? Arguably, because it's an extremely fun shoot 'em up game. Um, but <laughs> like I said, that's a lot of money to spend on one game. Power Strike here is my rarest Sega Master System game, and I have a fairly large Master System collection. I know there's some extremely rare games out there, like Power Strike 2. Uh, but this here, what makes this different is that I believe in the U.S. this was only available as a mail-order game only. Uh, and there was an alternate cover version that was released in Europe uh, for the PAL region. But um, this goes for about $40 to $50 complete. Now, you guys know I have a very large PS2 collection, and I have some games in there that are worth more than these two games that I'm about to show you. But I wanted to show these because they are actually really hard to find. They might not command really high prices, but they're pretty hard to find, especially this one here, Wizardry Tale of the Forsaken Land. It took me a very long time to get this. I was trying to find it in the wild in GameStops when they carried PS2 games used, um, and I had to search far and wide for a complete copy of this. If you're into dungeon crawlers and such, this is actually a really good game to track down. Also on the PS2, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. This game, it came, it's about $35, uh, $40 on the high end for a complete copy, but this is actually really hard to find as well. When it comes to the modern generation systems like Xbox 360, Wii, PS3, there are some really rare games, usually maybe a certain collector's edition or a game that really just receives a very low print run. Um, I just picked out a couple here that are pretty hard to find. First of all is Trinity Universe on the PlayStation 3. This is a dungeon crawl, sort of cross-universe game between NIS and Gust uh, RPG franchises. It's an okay RPG, but this is becoming increasingly hard to find. A complete copy of this will generally go for at least $40 to $50. The Deluxe Edition for Demon Souls on the PS3 was a first print run copy only, and this is the only way, still, even to this day, to get the official strategy guide for Demon Souls. Uh, when this first came out and it first released and they, these sold out, these were going for, you know, $150 plus dollars. The price has gone do down recently, but that does not mean that this is still not rare. And it, I would say it's definitely worth the price. It goes for about $70 to $80 right now. Probably the most rare uh, current generation game that I own is Hyperdimension Neptunia Mark II. And this came out not that long ago, but this is already going for around $150 on eBay because this was a pre-order special edition only on the NIS America store. And they sold out of pre-orders very fast, and I was lucky enough to grab one. So, And it only retailed for $65, so the value on this is definitely keeping, you know, keeping its price. On the Wii, Metroid Prime Trilogy is probably the most expensive and rare Wii game that I own. Um, this was in production for a very short time, so it wasn't in stores for very long, maybe like a month or two at the most, I believe. And this goes on eBay now for approximately $80. It comes in a very nice steel case as well. This game here, the value has gone down recently, but it does not mean that it's still not rare, and that's Kora Rimpa Marble Mania. Now, don't get this confused with Marble, uh, what is it, Marble Saga on the Wii. That one is more current, and that's definitely not as rare. This is a hard-to-find game. It used to go for around $60 to $70. The price has dropped dramatically on it, but it's still very hard to find. On the PlayStation 1, I have a game that has gone up in value a lot over the years, mainly because of a certain game on the DS, but that is Tale Concerto on the PS1. This is a um, considered to be a unofficial prequel to the Solo Turbo uh, game on the Nintendo DS, and this is actually sealed. So complete copies of this actually used to go for around $25 to $30 on eBay. But since the release of the DS game, uh, they have skyrocketed to around $60, upwards of $70 for a complete copy. And sealed copies, I really don't recall seeing many of these on there. So the price on this could be whatever a collector is willing to pay for it. While I do have a lot of valuable PS1 games, one that I wanted to showcase that has been going up in value quite recently is Toomba on the PS1. Uh, a complete copy of this lately is going for around $60 to $75 plus dollars, and I would say it's definitely worth it if you're a fan of platformers, especially Klonoa. It uses 2D sprites on 3D backgrounds. This is a very good game. And probably my most valuable PlayStation 1 game is Sui Coden 2. Uh, these complete go for about $150 right now, and admittedly, I am actually not the biggest fan of this game simply because I find there's just too many characters to manage. I'm not a big fan of that in RPGs, uh, but this is still a very hard to find and expensive game. 
For the Japanese Sega Saturn, I have a couple of games here that are pretty valuable. This is not terribly rare, but it is up there in price, and that is Tri-Rush Depi. This is a very cutesy platformer, only on the Japanese Sega Saturn. For a complete copy on a good day, you're looking at around $80 to $100, and on the high end, you're looking at around $180. I also just recently got a sealed copy of Super Tempo. Uh, this is the sequel to Tempo on the Sega 32X, and um, a sealed copy I have never seen before. A complete copy of this will go for around $100 to $150. So a sealed copy, I have no idea what the value on this would be. Um, it's a very colorful platformer though, but for that price, I'm not sure if I want to open it or not. Currently my most expensive shoot 'em up um, in my collection right now would probably have to be Hyper Duel on the Sega Saturn. This is a Technosoft shooter from the developers of the Lightning Force series, uh, is what they're most well known for. A complete copy of this will generally go for around $150, upwards of $200 on eBay. It's a very good game though. And on the Neo Geo CD, I have a copy of Polestar, which is generally known as being one of the best-looking side-scrolling shooters in existence. The sprite work and the backgrounds and the detail in this game is amazing. A complete copy of this is worth about $80 to $100. For the Virtual Boy, uh, one of my rarest games is a complete copy of Waterworld. Uh, a complete copy of this will generally go for around $100, if not more. It's a terrible game, though, so this is definitely for collectors only. Tetris 3D is also really climbing up in rarity and value. It took me a really long time to get a copy of this, and for a complete copy, you're probably looking at around $50 to $60 in good condition. Snowboard Kids 2 and Harvest Moon 64 would probably have to be my two rarest N64 games that I own complete in box. Uh, Harvest Moon, the last time I checked, I think goes for around $60 to $70 in complete condition. And Snowboard Kids 2 took me a really long time to find in complete condition and in, in a nice condition as well. Um, this goes for around 50 to 60. I think it should go for more because I find this really hard to find. Well, this game here, I'm actually really happy that I picked up at Prax Prime last year because the price has just about doubled. I picked up a complete copy of Popful Mail on the Sega CD. This is a working designs uh, action RPG. And I don't know if you guys can see here, but I did pay $60 for this. And the price on eBay right now is about $100 to $120 for a complete copy. So I'm really glad I grabbed it when I did. And my next most valuable game on the Sega CD is probably Shining Force CD. Uh, complete copies of this go for about $70 to $80, and this is actually a compilation of the Shining Force games on the Game Gear. For the Sega Saturn, Albert Odyssey, Legend of Eldeen. Uh, this is a great traditional old-school RPG. Complete copies of this, once again from Working Designs, tend to go for around $80 to $100. Lunacy here is actually, it's not terribly expensive, but it actually, it's very hard to find and the value is rising. Complete copies right now are tending to go between $50 and $70, and this is an old school sort of first person adventure game using some great CG artwork. Burning Ranger is one of the very last games released for the Sega Saturn in the US. Um, this game here generally goes for around $100 complete. It's a very colorful game, you actually play as a firefighter. Uh, classic game by Sega, it's a lot of fun. Saturn Bomberman, this game here typically goes for about $80 to $100, and uh, this game is well known for the amount of players that it allows you to play with in a single room. Ten people can play this at once. That beats out even the online Bomberman on Xbox Live and PS3 and such. Uh, you can get this a lot cheaper though on Japanese Sega Saturn. Shining Force 3, uh, this generally goes for around $70 to $85 complete. And I have been meaning to go back to this and try it again because I was having a really hard time at the beginning of this game. But it's a lot of fun, and unfortunately we did not receive the second and third parts to the Shining Force 3 series, which only came out in Japan. Magic Knight Ray Earth, which is also known as being the last game released in the U.S. for the Sega Saturn. Um, this is a really cutesy working designs RPG, once again. See a theme here with working designs? Uh, typically, a complete copy of this will go for between $90 to $110. Two recent pickups of mine, which are actually really rare and hard to find, are Towers 2 for the Atari Jaguar. This is known as being the only RPG on the Atari Jaguar, and complete copies of this range anywhere between $100 to $150. Also, Skyhammer, which was never officially released until... I think about 2005, 2006, I forget, which was 2007, something like that, um, by Songbird Games, and this actually will generally go for around 70 to 80, but it's not so much the price, it's still actually very hard to find. And here are some of my more rare complete Super Nintendo games. 
Demon's Crest on the Super Nintendo. This has gone up in price a lot recently. It goes for around $80 to $90. King of Dragons is actually... I was searching a while for a complete copy of this, and thank God I got one when I did, because prices on these have gone up when they show up. Uh, generally, a complete copy of this will go for around $70 to $80. Nosferatu is actually very hard to find complete. They show up so rarely that it's almost hard to put a price on it. Uh, but the game isn't very well known, so the prices aren't quite up where they are uh, for a game of this rarity in, in a complete box. But I would, I would estimate it's worth about $80 to $120 complete. Ghoul Patrol is sort of the unofficial sequel to Zombies Ate My Neighbors. And uh, complete copies of this are very hard to find. Though the price isn't too high, they usually go for about $70. The condition on this box isn't that great, but this is Lufia 2, Rise of the Sinistrals, and uh, complete copies of this generally go for about $90 to $100. I got mine for a very good price with some other Super Nintendo games, so I'm very happy to have scored on this one. And lastly, Soul Blazer. I li I've been trying, when I picked this up, I had been trying about a good eight months to get a complete copy of this for a good price. I forget what I paid, but it was really cheap. And uh, now they tend to go for about $70 plus dollars for a complete copy. All right, for the N-Gage, um, this here is Catan. This is sealed. I never plan on opening it because I'm not a fan of Catan. Uh, but what makes this so rare is that this is a mail-and-order game only. This was never available in stores. You actually had to go to the official N-Gage website and order it from their website in order to get this game. Recently, a sealed copy of this sold for uh, something like $100 to $150. I forget what the price was, but it was very expensive. And Pathway to Glory, Akuza Islands. Now, a lot of you might know of Pathway to Glory on the N-Gage, which is widely known as probably the best game you can buy on the system. It's a tactical World War uh, turn-based game. And not many people know that it actually received a sequel. I didn't know this for the longest time. This was another mail-in order game. And it's so rare that I actually decided to settle for the PAL release. Uh, the N-Gage is region-free, so I can play this on my US N-Gage. But this is the sequel. It's extremely rare. Once again, another mail-in release only. I have a couple of pretty uncommon games on the PSP that are getting harder to find. They're all RPGs, but these are ones to look out for. So if you ever see these for a good price, be sure to pick them up. Crimson Gem Saga. Uh, this was recently released on the iPad or the iOS, so it kind of drove the demand down a little bit. But this is still pretty hard to find, and a complete copy will generally go for around $40. Now, this has a long title, so excuse me as I read it. ZHP, Unlosing Ranger vs. Dark Death Evil Man. Um, I am not a big fan of this. It's a roguelike game with a lot of comedy to it. Uh, but complete copies of this right now are selling for about $40. So this is one to look out for. And I had a very hard time getting a copy of this in complete condition for a decent price. And that's Hexy's Force. Um, these are going up in value and getting pretty hard to find. Expect to pay about $40 to $50 for a complete copy. For the DS, I have a couple of games here that are pretty hard to get. Uh, Radiant Historia, this is the first print run copy. Now, this used to go for about $150, um, but this did re receive a reprint on Amazon recently for only $35 or $30. So it drove the price down a little bit, but in the future, expect these become very rare because this was only for pre-orders where it came in a box with the soundtrack. The price on these are hovering around $60 to $70, but that's going to go back up in a little bit. My World, My Way, this is a very hard-to-find RPG on the DS. It's not supposed to be that good. It's supposed to be very repetitive, a little bit mediocre, uh, but it's actually very hard to find. It's an Atlas RPG. Prices on this tend to go for around $40 to $50. My Japanese Coach, uh, this is one of the more expensive used games I ever bought for the DS. I think I paid about $40 for this. The price has dropped recently, but that doesn't mean that this still is not hard to find. Uh, it actually teaches you how to write Japanese and read it, so it's pretty interesting if you're trying to learn the language. This here is really hard to pin a price on because I really never see these show up on US eBay. Um, I think I saw one a long time ago that sold for $150, buy it now, but it's it's kind of not really, I can't really remember for sure. But this is the Japanese only collector's edition for Solar to Robo, uh, which comes with an art book and a soundtrack and a really nice collector's edition box. Yeah, I'm going to be keeping a lookout to see when these show up because I'm curious on the value of this. All right, and now that we're getting towards the end of the video, I am going to show you guys what I consider to be the top 10 rarest games in my collection. Now, some of the games I showed you here might be worth more than some of the games here, but these, just based on rarity alone, are definitely within my top 10. First up is Lucene's Quest on the 3DO. This is the only, well, besides Guardian War, but this is more of a traditional RPG. Um, this is the only traditional US RPG 
release um, in the US, and this is extremely hard to find, complete in box. Uh, just the jewel case only will sell for between $80 to $100. A complete copy, really hard to say. It's ballpark anywhere between $150 to $300. They just they show up so rarely. It's more of whatever collectors are willing to pay at the moment when they show up. I'm so happy to have this in my collection. I was searching years for a complete copy of this in good condition. I didn't buy it on eBay. I got it through a collector um, in a trade, and let's just say I paid a really good price for it. All right, we have another N-Gage game, and it's another mail-away release, and this is Rift's Promise of Power. This is a tactical turn-based RPG set to a tabletop series, RPG series, that up until 2005, this was the only, from what I believe, the only video game uh, interpretation of that tabletop RPG series. And I've been playing this recently, and it's actually really good. Unfortunately, it's extremely rare, and complete copies of this will go for at least $100. On the Neo Geo Pocket Color, I have Evolution Eternal Dungeons, and uh, this is sort of a, a handheld version of Evolution uh, from the Dreamcast. And I was playing this not too long ago, a few months ago, and I was actually having really a, a lot of fun with it. It's got randomly generated dungeons, a lot of grinding, which I like. It's actually a really well done RPG. Unfortunately, it's very rare. This only came out in PAL region and in Japan. The J Japan version, obviously, is pretty common, but uh, the PAL region version is very, very rare. Um, if not the rarest game, from what I remember, released uh, in Europe. And prices for the complete copies, you're talking about 200 to 250 dollars. On the Virtual Boy, uh, a complete copy of Jack Bros. This is definitely the rarest U.S. release game for the Virtual Boy. Uh, it's an Atlas game. It's a pretty okay game, um, but a complete copy. Of this they've gone down a little bit recently. Uh, they used to go for around 250 to 300, but now you're looking at about 130 to $180. And Mario Tennis on the Virtual Boy. Now, a lot of you might be saying, Mario Tennis, wasn't that a packing game? It was, but this here, what makes this so rare is the box that it's in. Uh, Mario Tennis was officially never released in stores for consumers in a box. This is the rental-only box from Blockbuster. Um, and this is extremely hard to find. Right down here it says for display only. This box alone, these days, sells for about $100 to $150. Panzer Dragoon Saga for the Sega Saturn. Uh, this is an extremely fun game. Excellent RPG. It's worth owning a Saturn for loan, loan. If you're an RPG fan, this is worth the price of admission, quite honestly. I only paid about $120 for my copy about eight years ago, seven years ago. Uh, now the price is about $200 to $300 for a complete copy. But honestly, RPG fans, I would say it's still worth the price. Trip World for the Game Boy. Now you know a game must be really rare and must be a lot of fun if I'm willing to buy a loose Game Boy cartridge that cost me quite a bit. But this game, I had been hunting it for many years. Um, and I, when I finally was able to get a copy of this game just to play it, I was all over it. This was only released in Europe and Japan, and they're both equally as rare. And it just so happens that I bought the game, I did a review on it, and then literally, the day after I did my review, they released this on the eShop in uh, Europe and Japan, I think it was. So I was a bit bummed about that, because... If anything, I would have just bought, you know, uh, I would have just downloaded it from the eShop on, you know, with a European account or something like that. But uh, I'm really happy to have it. It's a really short but a really fun game. Check out my review if you're curious on this one. It's similar to a Kirby game. Okay, this here is Jutsusuchi, uh, sorry, Shinrei Jutsusuchi Taramaru, also loosely translated to Psychic Killer Taramaru um, on the Sega Saturn. And this is known as possibly the rarest Sega Saturn game across all regions, so across PAL, US, and Japan. Uh, more rare than Panzer Dragon Saga. This is an excellent side-scrolling action game. Uh, only 7,000 or 7,500 7, copies of this game were ever made. Um, I actually have a review coming out for this very soon, so you guys can check it out, but this is an amazing game. Unfortunately, it's extremely rare, and for a complete copy, you're looking at around $250 on a good day and upwards of $350 at times. So what is the rarest game in my collection out of everything that I own? What could it be? Well, it's something pretty pretty obscure, um, and it is for the Wonder Swan Color, and more specifically, the, uh, the Swan Crystal, and that is Dicing Knight, also known as Dicing Knight Period. And this is a roguelike RPG, only released in Japan, obviously, because it's on the Wonder Swan. But what makes this so rare is that it's one of the final games released for the Wonder Swan Color. And this was a winner of the Wonder Witch uh, project, which from what
what I loosely can remember, essentially, they were, uh, they gave, Bandai gave out development kits to people to work on games, and if you developed the best games, they'd actually release them for you and put them in physical form to sell. Um, and Dicing Knight was one of them, along with Judgment Silver, uh, Silver Sword, which is a shoot 'em up, but that is not quite as rare as this one. Um, this game here is so rare, it's almost impossible to put a price on a complete copy. These show up so infrequently, and the ROM itself is even hard to find um, from what I've read. It's actually a pretty fun game, a complete copy of this. I'm not going to say what I paid for it, but if one was to show up, um, my estimate would be around $300, but it's more of just what collectors are willing to pay for it. But I've been after this for a very long time, ever since I laid my eyes on a video of it. And uh, it's a fun game, what can I say? A roguelike on the Wonder Swan, and it's totally English friendly. It's got some really good graphics as well. Randomly dun generated dungeons, what more can you say? Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long, but I figured you guys would uh, have fun watching that. And definitely go check out Josh's video as well. Um, and thanks for watching.